Hey Floss Tube, this is Amy. Hope you're having a great stitching week. I'm so excited to spend a little bit more time with you and fill you in on what I've been doing. We started off last Monday with our Veterans Day holiday and my daughter did not have to go into work. So we just had a crafting and baking day and it was so much fun. And um, she made pumpkin cheesecake bars and we made, my mom was at home making pumpkin pies. She was on a different tangent, so um, should have been all baking together. We made uh, Chex Mix, which when we make Chex Mix, we make it a little bit different. We don't like all the other stuff. <laughs> we like the Chex Mix cereal and we like the seasoning. So we made some Chex Mix. We also made our famous um, hot chocolate homemade hot chocolate mix that you make with the powdered milk and Nesquik and powdered sugar and cinnamon. Oh, so good. So that's kind of a standard in our family. Our friends and loved ones know that they're getting hot chocolate from us every year and that's just one of our favorite treats. And when the weather gets cold, we are ready to make that hot chocolate. So we made a lot of hot chocolate. Um, we also jumped straight to Christmas and made some spritz cookies, the little cookie press. We always make Christmas trees that are green and they're so good. They're not too sweet, but sweet enough and it's just addicting. Can't eat just one. And they freeze really well, so we made a whole lot of them and stuck them in the freezer and it's really hard to try to forget they're there because they're really good even when they're frozen. So I did deep clean my uh, my deep freeze. I thawed it out, organized it, and made room for all the holiday baking that we're doing. So that was really fun just to have a day with her. One of our craft projects that we did is we did make our coffee filter wreath. And I just put a black bow on it to hang it. So it's kind of fun. I think it was 750 coffee filters. Um, she folded and I glued and it worked really well with the low temp glue gun which was really nice because it was not hurting at all to do that. Um, I got the little green foam wreath from Dollar Tree and then three packages of coffee filters and did the Priscilla and Chelsea tutorial for that so that was kind of fun to make. Actually that was the only craft we did because everything else was baking and eating so that was lots of fun. This week as far as cross stitch I am still working on bygone stitches one nation and I talked about wanting to give this to my dad for his birthday his birthday is in January so I'm making myself to at least one of these a day I'm trying to do more telling myself I can't do anything else until I've done at least one of the little flowers. So I've got that. I've got some more motifs on the side. Like I've told you before, I'm changing part of it. All the states are done. The borders are done. Just have a little bit to go. So I think that will be a fun thing and hopefully I can finish that when I need it. I've also been working on my Nantucket Village by the Bay Needle Arts and I'm doing parts three, four, and five. And I'm getting very close to being done. I need to order my, there's actually two different weeks greens, moss and I forgot what the other one is. But I'm going to order those. Everything else I'm using DMC. And that's how the pattern is written, DMC plus two weeks. And that's on the Summer Sky Jubilant. Really, really pretty. 32 count. So I need to place my order. I get on one, two, three stitch and just want to order everything. And then I get overwhelmed because there's too much stuff. And then I just par get paralyzed and don't order anything. So I need to go ahead and get an order going. The project that has been all consuming to me is my Autumn Quakers by Rosewood Manor. 
I cannot put this down. I told you a couple of videos ago that I had misplaced some of my floss for this and was at a standstill because it's all Victorian motto that I substituted in for the Valdani. And it is now found. It was down in the couch cushions. It's amazing how something can get lost. And I swear I looked there before, but then I found them. So all floss is found, all safely accounted for. And I'm just skipping around having fun with this. This is on 28 count doubloon. Love it, love it, love it. So I've decided that this pattern, this project is such a metaphor for life. So I restarted it four times. I've stitched this four times. My fabric wasn't big enough. My fabric wasn't cut straight. I ordered fabric again and here we go. So it is on the 28 count doubloon. And I think now we're good. Got the border. I started in the middle this time. So I've done pages part of one, two, three, part of four, five, and six, and then down at the bottom, pages seven, eight, and nine. This one right here was so fun to stitch. It was fun because it was like going in circles. And then the inside was fun too. This was difficult. <laughs> that took a long time. So I just thought, you know, I'm trucking along, thinking I'm on the right path, and then all of a sudden I go, oops, I was way off. That's not even close. So I've done a lot of frogging, taking out a lot of stitches on this and starting over. Um, I like how it mirrors a lot on the different patterns so I can kind of see, you know, as I'm going, I'm not having to look too hard at that pattern. I can kind of look at what I've done on the other side. And when they match up, I'm so excited. And when they don't match up, I have to ask myself, is it really that big of a deal? Or can I just go on? So there are some places where if it was a standalone, it's not a big deal. I think that one actually is good. I don't think that one's messed up. But if it connects to something else, one stitch, a half a stitch is crucial. So it's just like life, you know? We're not gonna always stay on the straight and narrow path. We're gonna try, try to back up, do over, do better. So I'm having a lot of kind of soul searching and conviction <laughs> while I'm stitching this because it just, to me, makes me think of, you know, if we just do it right the first time, get it matched up, makes things a whole lot easier. So that has been so much fun. And like I said, I can hardly put that down. So much fun. A couple of haul items. I have some fabric and I have a board. This is a kind of a slate board that I got at Hobby Lobby. Not sure what I'm gonna put on it yet. It's heavy. If it broke, it would shatter, like dropped, it would shatter into a million pieces. But I thought that might be cute for something. I also got some patriotic fabric on way clearance sale. And I thought I would do maybe the Fat Quarter Shop tutorials on the different quilt blocks. But then I saw a tutorial for some rag garlands. So I might do some rag garlands with that, but definitely for some finishing for cross stitch. Each one of these is two yards. So I'll have a lot of fabric. I just thought that was fun. That might even work for Christmas. Like the gold and the cream. I have decided that I don't like stitching white threads. I don't know why. So I have a predicament. You guys were so awesome to give me your input on different flosses and what you preferred. And I love that and there's so many choices out there. I'm definitely going to 
order some in and try some different ones. I do the Victorian model already and I have a few of the classic color works in maybe a week or two from some of my Chalk on the Farm series that I ordered. So um, I'm just gonna do dive into more of that. My Cinnamon Stars, I don't have that in front of me right now, I'm sorry. I went ahead and did the DMC substitutions for that and I'm a little bit frustrated because of course it doesn't look like the picture and a lot of my colors are very close and um, I also try to sub in some Victorian motto and they just I don't have the differentiation that I need probably on that I think I'm going to go ahead and keep trucking on it because it's getting so close to being done but I also thought about restitching it using the specialty flosses like it calls for so you guys were sweet to share your floss, your favorite flosses and what you enjoy using. Thank you for helping me on that. My dilemma now is I started the Tiny Modernist Words to Live By a long time ago. I started it when it first came out, I think. So I just got the black 18 count Ada. I did the frame and my frame is crooked. It's not right. If you look, this is narrower than this. It's not centered. The distance from here is bigger than the distance to here. It is so far off. I did the middle and then I realized how far I was off and I have all of this done. I bought two or three of the um, little pieces. I haven't purchased the rest of them, but I'm thinking I need to start all over. I, I don't like, I don't know. And I look at the stitches in these little white on black Ada that should be easy. My stitches are crooked. They're, they don't look pretty. And I do wear multifocal lenses. I do have a 2.0 reading, reading prescription at the base of my glasses. I have magnifiers that I could use, they're just not as handy. Um, I do stitch with bright lights most of the time, but I'm just kind of sick that I put this much time into it and it's not right. So instead of continuing what's not right, I need to figure out how to fix it. So one second. I got some other fabric and this is actually, I bought, let me see, I just went to Joann's and got the Charles Craft Ada, the white and the cream because I wanted to play with colors. So I did this charcoal gray. It has some purple hues to it. So I did the off-white charcoal gray and thought I may start over on words to live by with the gray. The fabric shrunk. So I measured out the piece that Tiny Modern is called for for the actual fabric, not the design, but what, how big of a piece of fabric you would need. When I did my writ dye, I did use hot water I did not bake this, I did not coffee tea stain it, but I used the hot water when um, I did my dyeing. So the fabric shrunk about two inches each direction. Therefore my holes kind of shrunk up. But am I, if my thinking is right, I still have enough fabric it should still fit on this piece because the holes are smaller now. The number of holes didn't change. They just got closer together. <laughs> Am I right on that? You guys help me before, <laughs> before I start this. And then I was trying to decide if the colors would go on that. So I don't know. Let me know what you think. I could always start again with a black. I could chunk it and not ever do it again. I love the idea of it, but I just frustrated myself on that. So that's my next 
challenge that I need help with. So I wanted to show you a couple of diamond paintings way back that I did. My very first YouTube video was like a minute or two, uh, a year, over a year ago, and it was about a diamond painting. So I never did anything else with that. I just thought that's, that's not really my thing, but I did a couple of pieces. So here's one that I did called Tree of Life. It's pretty. And then the other one that I did is a Van Gogh Starry Night. So they're pretty and it was fun and kind of a new little craft to do. Uh, I, um, I enjoy doing it. It just doesn't really go with my house decor and I don't know where I would put them. And so it's kind of like, why do them if I'm not going to display them? But then again, I have a bunch of finished cross stitch projects that I haven't done anything with either, but I need to. I need to get going on some finishing. So that's some, just some projects that I did. I'd ordered another kit from AliExpress. So it wasn't the diamond dots, it was the knockoff and it was a great big elephant and then all by itself and then a bunch of elephants walking behind it and this one elephant in the front was just like spraying confetti instead of just plain old water out of its trunk and I thought it was fun. It was huge and I put it away for a while and worked on it for a while then put it away and I got it back out the other day just to kind of play with and it the project was not sticky anymore. My paper wasn't sticky. Even though it was all covered, when I uncovered it, it wasn't sticky. And the part that I had done, the little um, diamonds were falling off. So that got thrown away. I was glad I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it before I realized that it was not going to stay sticky. So probably no, no more diamond, diamond painting for me. I got my grandson a little kit to Christmas one and he works on that sometimes and it's fun, but I much prefer the cross stitch. So quote, there was a quote that I heard and it was so, it reminded me of another one. So the one I heard this week was, for one minute, walk outside, stand there in silence, look up at the sky and contemplate how amazing life is. It's like, yeah, just stop. I think the action of just stopping is so important. And I know that just quiet and stopping a minute of contemplation or reflection is huge. I know I don't take the time enough to do that. But it reminded me of a quote I'd heard a long time ago from Abraham Lincoln that said, I cannot Sorry, I can see how it might be possible for a man to look down upon the earth and be an atheist, but I cannot conceive how a man could look up into the heavens and say there is no God. And that to me is so true. So I love this time of year. I love warm fall days. I love being able to get outside as much as possible. I'm definitely a warm weather girl. But if the wind's not blowing, I can handle some cooler fall, fall temperatures. So just kind of made me want to stop and think about, especially this time of year, what I'm thankful for. And I'm thankful for you guys. I'm thankful for your community. I'm thankful for your input and, you know, just helping me problem solve. You guys with the flosses, y'all were so awesome at helping me know what you liked and what had worked for you. And that's very, very helpful. The other thing that I appreciate is you guys being so sweet when I am like, oh, I lost my flosses and and you, you, you all saying you're going to find them. It's okay. You got it. So it's just, it's fun. It's fun having you guys to talk with and share life with and share cross stitching with, because like I said, I just don't have anyone in my world that understands the craziness of cross stitch. So it's fun to have you. So I hope you have a great week. Thank you for spending time with me. I so look forward to seeing you again and hopefully I will have another finish. That's my goal. If I could just do like one a week, 
that would be perfect. So I have some ideas and look forward to sharing with you as soon as I finish. Good to see you guys. Talk to y'all soon. Bye y'all.